We're under caution at Daytona. Michael Waltrip has just taken a stinging side winder flyer from the trioval down toward turn one. One car got in the back of him and he went for a ride and he's climbing out okay. Under his own power, they're not having to help him out. That's a good sight. I think that, that roof has been mashed down a little bit and closed the, the window area. Michael is a big guy anyway and needs all the room he has. Throws his hand up, waves to the crowd. That was a wild ride. So Waltrip will get into the ambulance for that mandatory trip to the care center, which has had a busy day. And there is no sheet metal left of the top of that windshield and leading edge of the roof. On Michael Waltrip's car, you can see where the windshield was and where it's all pushed down. Look at here. Ripped right through it. Is that abraded a thousand feet down the asphalt? And you notice the windshield is made out of uh, a substance that does not break anymore. So a long time ago, that would have went up in the grandstand. So they're, they're going along with safety all the time. Michael was running in sixth position when this happened. He came by the start-finish line. Let's take a look at what did happen. He's going to get a tap here, Ned, as he comes off the trioval down on the inside of the racetrack. Right there. He gets touched right there. Now, this car goes way up in the air. When it turns around, you see it start to fly there. Turns completely up and pancakes right down on the roof. That's what did all that roof damage you were talking about. Then it goes into a barrel roll. Side over side many, many times. Now it's on the nose of the car and then hits hard on the back. That looked much like Ricky Rudd's flip here in 1984 in what was then the Bush Clash. Here's another look. Jay Sauter has a little push coming out of the trioval and just gets into Waltrip. And they were just coming out of the trioval at that point of the racetrack. You're almost out of control anyway, buddy, and just a little tap sent him around. Absolutely. And the other thing, the roof flaps couldn't work because it went around so quickly. And a minute the back addressed the air, it went straight up in the air. Buddy, the pits are open. Dick Bergman. Kevin Harvick is in. He is going to take two tires. The double zero. Buckshot Jones has beaten him out. Childress wanted to take four tires on that number two car. The pit crew overruled him. They took two because they wanted the car to be a little looser. Buddy, you've owned a race team. What happens when you overrule the man who signs the checks? Uh, that's not a good thing. You will <laughs> hear about that when you go home. I'll tell you that. Wow, Michael Waltrip's number seven. Not much left. Well, here he is. That's and Jay Sauter right there. They make contact. Jay Sauter turns to the outside, gets away from Walter. Right here, you can see the back come off the ground. And then it digs in and starts that barrel roll. Normally you see that when it gets on the grass, but it uh, started before it got off the pavement. The good part of that wreck, they can make another car, but Michael Waltrip's okay. He walked to the ambulance. That's here. Jay Sauter, he's trying to hold control of that car, but it slips up the racetrack with a little bit of push. And as Waltrip goes over, when he comes down oh, right, on his roof. Right on the roof, yes. And then it just keeps carrying momentum. It starts to go. You know, I raced for 35 years, and I never did that. Good thing. Never did that. Thank goodness. Here's another look. You see the back end just lifts up off the ground. <laughs> you see it's going to come right down on that about the wind, top of the windshield. Any way you look at that, that was hard contact. That just tells you the cars are very, very strong. You know, in recent years, NASCAR has mandated added bars to the roll cage, including one down the center of the windshield and one which would be where your vent window would be if cars still had those. And I think that bar, that vertical bar, helped prevent the windshield, the top of the windshield of Michael Waltrip's car from collapsing down on him and certainly saved him from serious injury. You're right, and that bar runs right down in that area of the, of the windshield, and they call it the Earnhardt bar from Randy LaJoy. There's what's left of Michael Waltrip's car. We'll be back to Daytona after this.
Welcome back to the Napa Auto Parts 300, part of Speed Weeks 2000 at Daytona, presented by Fritos. Michael Waltrip's car is a wreck. He is okay. Now, here's that bar I was talking about right down from the windshield. Of course, there's support bars and structure all around here. Now there's one in the middle of the windshield. That bar at the vent window saved him. That's not the worst car Michael Waltrip's ever wrecked. If you want to see the car nobody can believe he climbed out of, go to the International Motorsports Hall of Fame at Talladega and see the one he wrecked at Bristol, Tennessee.